Okay, cool. So, yes, I, I'm Hannah Mae Ree, and I am here from the Black Banjo Reclamation Project. Um, yeah, today, two weeks after we had a really amazing gathering virtually with everyone here. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, and yeah, there's, we had a really amazing time being able to, to get to know each other a little bit, learn a little bit about each other. And, um, and now we're back. We've had some time in the last few weeks to, to just like ground into that. And yeah, we're just welcoming everybody back into the space. And yeah, just a tiny bit of context, like this, it's been a real honor to be a part of this project for the last few years. Um, with many of the folks here, Sule, Chelsea, Ebony, thank you so much for being here to, to support this project um, and all the ways that you are contributing. And um, the more that we go deeper into this project of building banjos and being in a space where we are reclaiming the history, the culture, and the ways that we interact with ourselves, with the earth, with each other. We're, we're, we're just growing capacity to, to be doing this work. And so that was why I originally uh, called out and made this ask for folks who were able and willing to do some fundraising for us um, and with us. And um, not only on our behalf, but for you all as being part of this project um, and really wanting to invite folks into the space. And everybody was really great by filling out this little survey. Thank you so much again, just for coming with that, coming with your honesty. Um, and we're gonna be jumping, we're gonna be jumping in. Um, I will say I was, I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at any of the resources that were sent out in the email earlier, but um, I'm, we're gonna be adding some resources to that probably throughout the time. So I hope everybody gets a chance to look at that if you haven't already, um, some really good information. And I think everyone here pretty much on the survey did name that they had done fundraising. It like, it wasn't this, foreign thing. So I'm really looking forward to learning something from you all today. Um, and really all we're doing today is this first hour, we're just going to be able to hear from a few different folks. Um, uh, and, you know, from everyone here, and like the last 30 minutes will be a little bit more like workshopping on like what folks want to do for this season um you know to be able to talk maybe do a breakout session like we did last time um so yeah um we do so i did put in the chat um you know whatever you need to do to ground into the space you know making sure that you have what you need water notebook food you know we're breathing we're breathing together we're releasing the stress of the day of the week maybe doing some stretches um and also tapping in and just remembering like what we were doing a couple of weeks ago, remembering what that was like to come together. Um, we can just take a minute. I am also going to just put in the chat, just a couple of the key points. Like when we came into the space last time, we sort of grounded in with some foundational things that we could all sort of see to be able to, to be able to feel comfortable coming into the space. So I'm just gonna post them right now. Um, just, yeah, coming with an open mind, this is an opportunity that we're here to learn and grow today and taking the invitation to be honest with ourselves, mostly like a lot of today's program, we're just gonna be doing a lot of listening to. So it's not always that we're always gonna be sharing, but we will have that opportunity. Um, taking responsibility for your for your needs, whatever it is that you need to do. 
Um, we'd love to see you on camera, but if you need to have it off, that's also okay. Respecting differences, you know, we're all coming from different places and particularly like today, we're talking about like class background a little bit more. So we're coming from different places on that. Um, and yeah, just being aware of the dynamics that we have with each other and it's okay to be uncomfortable, um, you know, with any of this content. And I think I, I would just add to it, you know, for myself and for anybody, um, it's okay to, to do better. Like there was definitely one thing last week where I was realizing one of the people had mentioned like, um, seating hi hi ale um you know you're welcome to describe also what like we want to also um not be ableist in our programming so i'm i was just calling myself out for you know we don't have captions like just being able to name what it is that we don't have and what we're not necessarily providing um and those are things that i want to do better as an organization to be able to to make it more accessible and so I just want to name that going into this that it's not a fully accessible program for a few reasons um and i apologize and i'm committed to, to doing better on that so um with that being said i would love to just presence chelsea and chelsea's gonna be um back with us today just tapping in a little bit um before we have our check-ins and i will actually put our check-in little prompt into the chat um so yeah i'd love for you to get us centered on what it is that we're going to be sort of diving into today chelsea and folks you can look at the prompt and that's what we'll be doing for our check-in today thanks for being here Awesome. Thank you so much, Hannah. For those of you who I haven't met yet, I'm Chelsea. I use they, them pronouns. I'm coming to you live from the East Coast, Frederick, Maryland, Piscataway territory, holding it down. Um, yeah, just feeling super grateful to be able to show up here again today. And um, yeah, I really want us to just kind of calm into our bodies. And that may take some time for us to land and really just have an intention of slowing down because whenever we're talking about economics, whenever we get into talking about equity, um, bringing in conversations of race, there's a lot that's gonna go on in our nervous system and there's already so much happening and that's up in life right now. So if you can just bring the intention to slow your pace, slow your breath, Notice what speed your mind is moving at. Can you even take that down to a quarter speed? Or a half speed? Noticing if there's any anxiety up right now about talking about economics about fundraising, about class differences. And moving in whatever ways you need to in your body to release any of that tension that could come forward or show itself to you. Not let it be a barrier for showing up as your full self, full capable self. And then just come into a stillness with an inquiring question around, you know, what is it that you're wanting to do with and for Black Panther Reclamation Project? Are there some connections in your corner? Are there some family members that have a lot of wealth that they could redistribute? Are there ways that Banjo has served you that you'd like to be able to give back? Really just start to hold the ways and the questions of what can I personally do? Just today, what can I personally do? What is one action 
that I can do to help bring abundance to this organization. And just give yourself a few minutes of stillness with those questions. And then I will pass the mic over to Sule. It's great to see y'all. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Cause my soul's got to see the baby kingdom. It's all right. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Yeah, my soul's got to see the baby kingdom. It's alright Baby, baby Don't you cry Cause you know your mama Was born to die And my soul's got to see up in the kingdom It's alright It's alright It's alright It's alright Baby, it's alright yeah, my soul got a seat up in the kingdom. It's all right. Huh. Mother Nature, she brought us here. So we open our hearts because we got no fear. Yeah, my soul's got a seat up in the kingdom. It's all right. Hmm. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, yeah, my soul got to see the kingdom. It's all right, huh. it's all right, it's all right, huh. it's all right. We've been brought here together to share our words. We have the strength to carry us all forward together huh? with the blessings of the days that have brought us here and the fact that we come together, we got to put aside all fear to help the world grow, to help our spirits get whole, to help the people do what they got to do so we can bring a vision that we know is new. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Yeah, my soul's got to see the in the kingdom. It's all right. <sighs> Sule Greg Wilson, he, him, Autumn Land, Maricopa Land. Of course, born <laughs> in Powtan Land, <laughs> conceived <laughs> in Potomac Land. So excited so amazed at this group that this is actually happening that this can happen and i'm very very excited to be able to bring what has come through me to hate to aid what we will bring forward together as a group that's all
Hey, everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, um, I'm just going to do a quick check in with this little prompt that we have, um, which I'll just read out loud. It's just name, pronoun, location, slash traditional territory. And um, just a quick bit of feedback on um, this feedback from last week. Um, and sorry, I'm really sorry. I don't really fully know how this works. Um, yeah, or just a quick bit of feedback on your involvement already with the Black Banjo Reclamation Project um, and why you're excited to be here today. Um, this is just a really quick, like one, you know, one and a half minute check in. And we may save some of these till toward the end. So actually, I'm just going to ask that the folks, anyone that's speaking today, um, to just check in. So I'd love to pass that to Chelsea, Ebony, and Ale. And then once we get past, um, five o'clock, we'll be able to like finish doing check-ins um, with everybody when we're actually in a sharing space. So thank you for understanding. We just have a couple of like time limitations today. Thanks. I feel mostly checked in, but I, I will add um, for the piece of feedback from last, last session, um, I was just really moved by the way that Banjo has come into everyone's life and impacted each of you in your hearts. And as somebody who's a recipient of one of the banjos from Black Banjo Reclamation Process Project, I, I feel like there's a new relationship being formed that is new to me, um, but also old. I played banjo a long time ago and then put it down and then this new banjo has come to me. So I'm feeling excited to um, keep the momentum of this project going because it's so powerful to me. And I'm really excited to hear what ways folks have been able to reallocate funds um, to move movements forward. Hi, everyone. I'm Ebony. I'm on Lenape land in Brooklyn. And I wasn't able to come to last to the last session, but um, so far I'm in deep gratitude to be involved with the Black Banjo Reclamation Project and even how Hannah and I met so organically in Oakland and I was gifted a banjo and now I'm in this winter cohort and like um, having the privilege to help with this cooperative development process that the project is going through. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be a part of the foundation of laying what I believe is going to be something that flourishes beyond our belief. And I think Hannah is just so brilliant and everyone that is supporting the project. So thanks for having me here. Hi, my name is Ale. I use she, they pronouns. And I am on the traditional territory of Coast Salish people, Duwamish tribe specifically. Uh, it's a tribe that is not federally recognized. Um, it's also known as Seattle. And yeah, I'm here because Hannah invited me to be here and Hannah and I met about five years ago at a festival, <laughs> re revival festival on Bashan Island and we connected there through music, but then we bumped into each other again at a um, indigenous gathering on Coast Salish land and I think we deep deeper connected in that space and um i've just yeah we've been tracking each other since then um and i i just care a lot about hannah and the work that i see them doing so i'm here to support today 
yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm truly in deep gratitude to just be in such a collaborative moment, just being here with everybody um, and feeling that support. And um, yeah, that's a big reason why I reached out to everyone um, in the first place. That was why I had made a call out to say, hey, you know, this project is bigger than me. And when it comes to being an organizer and being a black organizer, there's a lot, um, there's a lot that I'm taking into account. There's a lot that I'm tracking with everyone who I'm involved with and the workload and understanding the capacity it takes to, to do something that is truly beyond me, um, beyond any of us as individuals. Um, and so for me, I had to come to the realization that you know, especially like this year, we have three banjo builds that we're doing. Um, that's a different capacity than we've ever needed in the past. We haven't been doing, we haven't been um, in sort of a, we're not in like a production mode, you know, we're just naturally organically growing. Um, and so this year being a different year, I feel like this was a good time for me to just be honest about this and like really in reality, like, I would like to fundraise to first of all pay myself which I you know i'll probably i'm not going to get back. You know a lot from that, but you know what I mean paying the people who are organizing this. As well as paying somebody to actually fundraise and having that be a role, especially until we're at a point where we are sustainable on our own. You know, as some kind of collective as some kind of entity that's able to generate funds and that's a lot of why ebony has been brought into this project um hey um yeah yeah being able to being able to be in reciprocity with um with each other with this project in a, in a good way um so yeah ebony is going to be talking just here in a minute about some of the work that we've been doing um and, and the relationship that that has to fundraising as well as to Open Collective, who is our fiscal sponsor. Um, and Ale is also here today to support um, as a fundraiser, um, you know, somebody that has experienced fundraising and who has been in relationship with Holistic Resistance, the group that Chelsea works with. Um, just being able to talk a little bit from personal experience what that has been like, um, just so that we can hear more voices. Um, kind of like I said, um, I'm a black organizer and that means naturally that, um, you know, in some ways it's like coming into disorganization and, and wanting to see that happen in a different systematic way. And, um, and so it basically what, what that means is that it does go beyond just planning the banjo builds or planning educational curriculum and this kind of stuff, which is what I love to do. I love that we have teachers and we wanna be able to support teachers and educators in this work. So that's what it is that we're creating is an ecosystem that's gonna support all of this work, whether that's growing, you know, um, the gourd materials and whatnot, woodworking, you know, some of the work we're doing with Paul and Joanne, which I hope they can speak on uh, in our time here today. Um, but there's a lot of these these structural things. So I do want to say yes, thank everybody. I want to just thank everybody for being so willing to be here today. Um, and that you're that you're willing to to support this work as well as be part of this work and be moving forward with us so that we can all grow together um because I, I i really hope that there's been a lot that y'all have even gotten out of just um the work that we've done together in the last few weeks so with that said um i want to hand it over to ebony to speak a little bit more on this topic thank you hi again so 
I just want to get a feeling of the room. Has anyone heard of the term solidarity economy? Put a thumbs up or no? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, and the term solidarity economy was coined in the 20th century, but really these are ancestral practices and it's rooted in care, autonomy, relationships, and ultimately it puts people in the planet over profit. Um, essentially it's the opposite of capitalism, which at its foundation is the commodification of labor and the earth. And it is at the expense of human and natural systems. Um, and so some of the principles of the solidarity economy is circularity, it's non-hierarchical, so we have a shared ownership and governance, um, and we work in cooperation versus, indiv versus individualism, which is also something that is deeply foundational of capitalism. Um, and through working in cooperation, we're able to create a shift from scarcity to abundance. So communities work in reciprocity. Um, that's one of the things that Hannah was saying. And that's one of the things that I'm doing with Hannah uh, as an exchange for the winter cohort. And this looks like mutual aid, wealth distribution, redistribution as well. And we've seen a lot of solidarity emerge out of the pandemic through mutual aid organizing. But again, it's something that is historical and people have been in solidarity with each other to meet their needs for a really long time. And just as an example in the US, freed and enslaved Blacks were in solidarity with each other through mutual aid initiatives and cooperatives to get their basic needs met, like burial, healthcare, and land. And today, the solidarity economy is has evolved even more. So we have cooperative models that are a part of any industry that you can think of, from ride shares to restaurants, artists. Um, and really, again, those generally come out of the need to meet a basic need that isn't being met in the community. So people are pooling their resources, pooling their skills, and creating a space where they have autonomy. And mutual aid groups as well. This is something that we've seen more so in the pandemic through community fridges, um, food distribution in other ways, and community funds. Um, and another thing that has emerged more more recently is open source platforms. So open source platforms are platforms where um, there isn't a corporation that owns our data, but that it that we have control over that. And the servers are something that the community can take and adapt to their own needs. And one of those platforms is Open Collective Foundation, which the Black Banjo Reclamation Project is using to fundraise through, but it's more than just an open source platform. It's fully transparent um, in not just um, in not just the back end, but also in their um, their revenue. You can see. The revenue, you can see what's coming in and out of Open Source Collective and where it's going, as well as for all of the collectives that are using the platform either as a bank account or to receive fiscal sponsorship. So 
organizations and collectives are able to get nonprofit status in just a few days. Um, and it's also used as a crowdfunding platform. So these collectives can have different projects on there where they're able to raise money for specific workshops, for their day-to-day -day expenses. Um, and yeah, so also Black Banjo Reclamation Project is something that I really like fully and deeply believe in, even before I was a part of the project, the cohort, and has been supporting in cooperative development. Because when I heard about it, I was like, this is the solidarity economy. This is a component of it. And it's rooted in transparency, accessibility. The workshops are sliding scale. There's options for bartering. Uh, it's a circular process where using materials straight from the earth, from the process of gathering the wood, growing the gourds, um, and showing people that entire process in a transparent way. And they're also in the process of creating a cooperative model, like I had mentioned, which is going to allow them to share leadership and really be able to have a more supportive network for all of the different arms of Black Banjo Reclamation Project. And they're also creating a space in a musical culture that generally excludes Blacks. And ultimately, they're honoring and reclaiming ancestral practices. So yeah, that's kind of like a brief overview of the solidarity economy and the connection that the Black Banjo Reclamation Project has. Um, but the solidarity economy is really in depth and it's, uh, it's varied. And one of the things that I do other than being an artist organizer at Open Collective Foundation, uh, I'm also, a uh, co-creator at Cooperative Journal Media. And this started as a podcast actually, um, where I interview solidarity economy models from around the world. So that looks like cooperatives, mutual aid initiatives, open source platforms, and really trying to do in-depth case studies of how they're using these models to meet their needs locally and globally outside of an extractive system. So if anyone wants some inspiration and optimism, uh, you can check those out. They are really what keeps me going and it's evolving so quickly um, because if the pandemic has showed us anything is that we want autonomy, we want freedom, we want to be able to be treated fairly in our workplaces, and we want to do work that brings us joy. So if anyone has any questions about it, I'd be happy to answer that. I'm not sure how much time I have to do that, though. There's enough time if anybody does have any questions and Ollie, you will be able to just start right at like the 445 mark that we were aiming for. I actually do have a question. I Were one of those links that were dropped in the chat to where we can listen to the podcast or is that a link that could be shared? Yes, cooperativejournal.com. Yeah, so... I dropped a few things in the chat, Ebony's website, which also has her podcast. And that link is also in, there was a resource link that I, that I wrote into the email for y'all. So that's also in there.
There was so much that you shared there, Ebony. I just want to say I am just, I love um, just being able to to listen to all the ways that, um, yeah, our collaboration has been enriching, like not only for us, but just as that seeps out into the world and allows for more of this type of thing, like we're even experiencing now to be possible. So um, yeah, it's really incredible that you're helping us see the material ways that this is happening. Um, I know that in my process, um, it has been very challenging, but I, I really also just want to shout out to Ebony, like if anybody is in a process where you are creating um, a cooperative, like similar to what we're doing over here, you know, Ebony is definitely somebody that you can reach out to as a consultant there there's a lot of resources that she has um provided for me as well so that i can continue my own um there's so much to learn and so much to research on this topic honestly um it's it's vast and yeah it's great to have ebony as a resource for that so i'm so glad to be working with you and just having other people that really see this this larger vision um, and help that that come to, to come to life. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Yeah, it's. I've also realized in this world of the solidarity economy that a lot of information is scattered. So if any of you are interested in just like learning more about it, I can have a whole resource list in my head I can share with you. And I'd be happy to do that because it's something that really we're trying to popularize. We're trying to activate this sense of remembrance within all of us because those are the roots that we all come from. Um, and, you know, capitalism might still be there, but we can create other systems beyond it um, for ourselves collectively. So I'll pass it to Ale. Thanks, Ebony. It was really lovely to learn about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Hannah asked me to come today just to talk about um, fundraising, which is almost funny to me because I don't consider myself a fundraiser <laughs> at all. But um, I think that's part of I think that's part of why I feel inspired to talk today is because yeah, like it's something that we can do. It doesn't have to be something we're, you know, we, we learned or that we're good at, um, or that, or that we're, that it's our profession. Um, and I think I'm going to just root in by starting with my commitment. Um, I, I am studying somatics and we work with, um, declarations or commitments and, um, my life commitment is I am a commitment to breaking the cycles of intergenerational trauma, both caused and endured by my ancestors. Um, I come from a low income family. Um, I'm the first person in my family to graduate from school at 38. And um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And so as, as a person who doesn't personally come from wealth, um, knowing, just having a deep understanding of, of history here in the United States and um, how uh, disparities and inequality has happened in like compounded layers throughout history that has us where we are today. Um, and understanding my own positionality in all of that as a white woman, um, I do still, although I don't have access to money, I do systemically benefit in, systemically institutionally from the color of my skin and for the spaces that I have access to. So I know that I can use um, my access to those spaces to help 
fund shift or um, one of the terms that um, Ebony used was um, wealth redistribution. So I can, I can have those conversations with people because of the access that I have to certain spaces or because of the relationships that I have. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just look at these questions, Hannah, that you sent me. Thank you for doing I, that. I can also like help move that along. I think you kind of, um, you kind of answered the first question. I don't know if there's anything else you wanna to add to that, but you were sort of explaining like, your commitment and why this is important to you. Um, mm -hmm. And I do, I, I feel like um, just like in respect of time and everything, if you do want to just skip to that next question about, I mean, if there's nothing else, do you, is there anything you want to add to the first question? Um, no, I don't need to add anything else to that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if, yeah, if how you got involved with holistic resistance will kind of be woven throughout these answers. But um, yeah, the question I can, we can just have this be like an interview. Um, I can say like, can you tell us about the relationship between fundraising and your grief work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the organization that I just supported and with this most recent fundraiser is um, this co-founders are Aaron Johnson and, and Portia Bede, two African heritage folks. Um, and they're building along with Chelsea and a bunch of other folks um, and myself, a grief sanctuary in the desert um, for African heritage folks and people of the global majority. So I've been building a relationship with Aaron for about about two years prior to this project really coming into like action. And um, grief work has been a path of mine for about the past five years because of my own childhood trauma. It's been one of the avenues of several that has really helped me move a lot of stuck stuff through my body. And so I, I, I have chosen to continue walking that path as someone who continues to create those spaces for other people. Um, so when Aaron and Portia moved this project into action, um, it became really clear to me really quickly that this was one of the ways that I, again, as a white woman with my positionality, wanted to support BIPOC folks having access to these spaces um, through the work that I'm doing also. So they're both, they're interconnected as I as I do my grief work and bring in funds for that, there's also a redistribution happening that, that then goes to grief to action. But I just, I think the reason why I was so, I don't want to use the word successful, but like, I guess the reason why I felt excited about fundraising when it wasn't my job that I do, I was, I had no idea what I was doing, um, was because I felt a deep, connection to what what was happening there and so it, it there was no question for me it was just like I absolutely 100% want to back this and so there was just a complete a whole body buy-in with the work and it made it flow so much easier Oh, I think you're muted. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for talking a, a little bit about your practice and and just that relationship building, creating um, the foundation of being able to do something now. You know, with with what we're doing here, um, we went uh, we went for you know the number that I had thrown out was two thousand dollars. Now, people are going to have their own relationship to that. Um, there are people even here that are like, they're, they're, pl they're planning on doing more than that. I know I'm talking to you, Patrick, um, you know, having these different circumstances of like access and desire. Um, and that, that like, yeah, there's, I think that this, that was a really good place as a starting point, um, just to check in about and that like, you know, of course we, we want and need like more abundance than that. But I think that just acknowledging like 
that with what Ale is saying, like that you did lead and create a fundraiser that actually raised like $60,000 pretty much. So really just like feeling the power in that um, of just like owning that. And yeah, there's there's a lot that, that can happen with those funds when they're in the hands of black organizers. Um, so yeah, I, I would be curious for you for the last question, um, if there's any feedback or, you know, what, what advice or feedback would you give to people who are looking to be in community with black folks or indigenous people um, who want to support? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna like remove the advice piece for me, but like what has worked for me personally, yeah. What's worked for me personally has been to just continuously be studying history um, to understand why we're here right now. And um, also, yeah, I mean, definitely black history, definitely indigenous history. And um, also looking at the prison abolition movement um, and getting really, um, yeah, just very much understanding what that movement is about, why it's important. Um, and I think the thing that for me has helped the most is as a white woman doing this work <clears throat> has been to really connect to my own belonging, um, connect to my own dignity and integrity um, so that because this work is hard right and and like I think one of the things that Aaron has taught me was like are you willing to hurt a black person in order to be close to them and and the answer there needs to be yes because it's inevitable and so I think you know as the deeper I feel connected to my own belonging and integrity um, and knowing that I'm going to mess up and I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to hurt folks and I want to do better and I want to learn and I want to show up. And I think that the other piece that feels important to name is just this just and I'm, I would not assume anyone on this call didn't know this, but that this isn't about me. And so when I'm having conversations with people I know I'm going into that call already with the intention of being in service to that voice um, because it's not about me. Yeah. And of course my feelings matter, right? <laughs> but that's what I mean by connecting to my own dignity and integrity because I can then get off a call and like call one of my white friends and be like, dude, do you have five minutes? Can I talk to you? I need to process something. You know, it's like really important to have that self-care so that the emotional labor isn't being, you know, like black folks, indigenous folks, people of the global majority are already holding enough to have to deal with what I'm processing on top of that. So having like a very good system of care set up as this work is happening is really important. just yeah yeah just just wanting to like echo and validate i'm seeing sule like put in these little gems in the chat of of what you're saying and what folks are saying and just yeah really like more power to that and um really grateful to to have your voice here tonight ale um i know that you are going to have to jump off in just a moment I want to just ask if there are any questions. Does anybody have anything that they want to say um, in response to what Ali shared? Just because we're going to be just taking a quick break. We're all going to be taking a break in a moment and coming back in a few minutes to like um, to do the last part of our program tonight. Nobody has questions. Um, um, you're welcome to just share affirmations, gratitudes with 
Ale with Ebony through the chat. Um, thank you for sharing your info there as well. It looks like Liana had a question. See. Si. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much to um, everyone who shared so far. It's really great to be here with you all. And I had a question with the fundraiser that you mentioned, Ale, like what tools you use? Like, was there specific tools that you use that you would recommend using, ones that weren't like were less useful or effective? Yeah, thank you. I think the the ways that we raised the most money was doing uh, outreach to sponsors. Um, so we had a team about this size and we would do weekly work meetings where we met once a week for an hour. And we would um, we had a spreadsheet that that we all had access to and we would we literally made like a list of maybe like a hundred different groups businesses organizations etc that we think might want to support this project so we got people like the work that reconnects we got the east point peace academy um I'm trying to think beyond boundaries, which is in Oakland, I think. Um, and then like a lot of restaurants and even like some yoga studios, you know, just folks. And I think one thing too, that is really helpful um, when, when, you know, being white and reaching out to other white folks is to like add in the educational piece of like why this is important and like, um, I think since the civil uprisings in the summertime um, to in 2020, like, I think that there a lot of people are trying to figure out, like, how can I support, like, how can I, and so, you know, adding some of that language in, like, this is one of the ways, like, this is one of the ways we're, we're, we're redistributing money into the hand, black hands so that there's more autonomy there with this project and kind of like, guiding their their way of thinking around it and then being patient with the responses because sometimes we wouldn't hear back from folks for like a month and we'd be like oh I guess they just didn't even see that email but then all of a sudden they they would just start responding um so and and like I would never not I would never convince myself that someone's too big to reach for because it was actually the ones that I thought would never respond that did and the ones I thought would respond that didn't um so like weaving earth you know for example that's another one that that supported us so yeah hope that's helpful yeah, this, these are all really great questions. And when we come back from our break in just five minutes, we're super on time tonight, y'all. It's like five. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what got into me. Um, but yeah, we actually are going to be like breaking down a few different fundraising methods. We'll get to like mingle a little bit more and like hear folks feedback because I'm really excited to kind of hear a little bit more um from y'all just some feedback of like yeah how you're feeling from last week how you're feeling just sitting with what we've uh dived into tonight and then we'll be able to kind of share a little bit on like what it is that we're thinking about doing for that for this like little mini project um and yeah i love ollie that you're giving us some framing for like what this could turn into at you know at some point i think like i'm I'm going for, this is already a huge thing I feel like I'm going for, um, but I love being able to see what, you know, what folks out there are doing um, and learning. So thank you so much for being here um, with this. Is there Can one other thing you want to share? Yeah, just one more thing about the sponsorship piece, which may, may or not be clear, but like, when you're reaching out to sponsors also it was like there's like a reciprocity happening so when we were reaching out to sponsors they, they were like we we gave them several different levels that they could you know like tiers that they could come in at and based on those tiers they would get something in return right so it, nothing big it's like oh we were having an actual online event and we're gonna like put your logo on all of the things that we're sending out to everyone so everyone's gonna know how cool you are that you're supporting us you know like there's some some sort of reciprocity there. And 
I would totally recommend y'all maybe organizing an online fundraiser, an event, because of that. Well, yeah. we're not really there yet. So we're not, okay. we really are gonna be tonight just focusing on like a little bit of these smaller pods because that part of what we're talking about is like being able to bring someone on that isn't me that's actually going to be focusing on organizing fundraising. So I feel like that person is going to be sort of spearheading some of that stuff coming into the next year, hopefully at the end of this year. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit, this is going to be a, a step toward that for sure. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you so much. All of this insight, it's, giving us a lot to think about, giving us a lot to feel about. Um, and yeah, I really appreciated what you said about like recognizing history, doing that research, being in tune with that. And I think pairing that with a grief practice, pairing that with a community practice that can help ground in our bodies, I think is a really perfect way to, to be showing up for this work right now. So um, yeah, let's, let's come back at five, Oh, five or so, five oh five, five oh six. We'll be back after these short moments. Thank you. I think my camera doesn't work anymore or something. Say like what? Connection. You're unmuted. You're talking, who are you talking to? I'm ta I'm saying that my video seems to not be working anymore. Oh, good thing you have a nice voice. Okay. <laughs> Try it one more time. So soothing. come off of having a darkened screen but when y'all are ready feel free to turn your cameras on so we can yeah. be ready right. I, I just i just can't oh right. yeah patrick has his on and mine is on but everybody else is nobody else is back <laughs> lily just gave us a thumbs up i can still see my screen too late <laughs> you I'm sorry what i can still see the screen Oh, 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 you can, okay, fine, be that way.
There she is. Okay, I had like a minor, uh, there might be others, but yeah, it's just a little minor like technical thing. Um, but here we are, we're back again. And yeah, so we're just sort of like, we're back here, we're reflecting, we're, we're here. We have just sort of been getting some more information and um, just due to not really having like as much time, as much spaciousness um, in the beginning, Beginning. I would love to hear from everybody that like hasn't gotten to share today. Just everybody who's who's shown up today. Um, so I yeah I oh actually I would love to yeah I'd love to just if we can just do like our our bit of a check in now and use that also as a time to kind of hear from folks like. What are you thinking about or um, for fundraising this time? So just sort of to be clear about this, um, we we do have um, a platform through Open Collective Foundation, which is our fiscal sponsor. And so the probably the best way for anybody who's like, if somebody's like, I want to fundraise two thousand dollars or whatever the number is that you have there inserted it's probably best for like you to just collect the money and then like do it unless you want to send folks over, you know, folks are always welcome to like send people to, to that platform. Um, but if folks are like just trying to keep track of it, it probably will be easier. So like, just to be really clear about this, like I've been taking like me organizing this was me fundraising but i am not a fundraiser and i literally already have a job where i'm where i'm actually planning the builds i'm actually like working with sule with paul and joanne to actually do the thing and so doing fundraising on top of that that's beyond my capacity and somebody else you know we we would love for our organization to be able to work with like someone who can do that like a black person so that we're contributing like economically in that way um so just to kind of like make yeah let's like sort of just to make that clear like this was asked to be like a volunteer force that could kind of fill in for the fact that there isn't somebody doing that right now where we already have these projects planned you know we have you know, documents that have what we're doing, what the budget is, like all of that's, um, I don't think all of it's available on Open Collective Foundation right now, just because I'm still learning the platform as well. But that's, that's what's, that's what's in motion happening, like as we speak is like things are getting uploaded, organized in that way to make it easier for everyone to refer to that. Um, so yeah, just like, just sort of reiterating like what, what the ask is. And um, yeah, it's like, we, we have expenses that are coming up this, like right now, like um, just getting ready for our Sacramento build and the things that are happening. Like nothing is, we're, we're very much like on time, but in the fundraising world, it feels like a lot of these organizations that like are really on top of it. Like they have that budget a year ahead of time. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like we're very much cutting it close as like being a grassroots organized thing. Like we do have funds. You can you can look at Open Collective and be like, okay, cool. They have like $5,000. But like, it's, 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 it's cutting it close because, you know, we, we can tap in a little bit with Paul and Joanne about this, but like they were just cutting wood for us just the other day. So that's like $1,200, you know what I mean? And like, I know, and that was so exciting because that's all the wood 
for all the projects we're doing this whole year. So it's like, once that's out of the way, it's out of the way, you know? So like definitely lots of props, lots of celebrations happening every day. There's, there's so much. Um, and we also were working on a fundraising letter for, um, for that. So there are things that I feel like we can support with, um, like, for example, if folks, if folks want to do an email campaign, I feel like we, the Black Banjo Reclamation Project, um, can support by trying to provide folks with, like, copy. But the, the reality, though, and one of the main things that I want to sort of relay here is that as much as we are expressing to y'all, like, what it is that we're doing, kind of in our own words, like, maybe that's me speaking, maybe that's Sule speaking, Chelsea, Ebony what's really going to at the end of the day make be a make or break thing is for y'all to be able to have that same communication with your community that allows you to know and for other people to know what what it is that's actually going on and why this is affecting your life so it's not just like this philanthropic model we're saving the black people because like we're not doing white saviorism you know we're doing our liberation is tied up like in each other and if if essentially like yeah it, a lot of white people are very comfortable right now with there being oh i don't know one black banjo player or whatever and that's not enough that's not liberation you know so what we're doing is supporting that moving forward for entire communities you know different geographic locations around and so um so that's that's really what i feel like kind of the homework is and what the like, what the ask is, is to like, be able to kind of communicate that in your own way that's truly actually benefiting to you. Um, and that is something that if folks are like, hey, I like have this draft, can I send this to you? Um, like, how do you feel like this sounds? You know, I'm open to that. I feel like Sule, you you know, I won't speak for you, but I think that folks are open to like, being in connection about this so that we can support while also acknowledging that the point of it is to take the load off of us at this particular time. So um, I just wanna say um, that from, yeah, from last time, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really happy and really supported to just be here with you all again. And um, yeah, it feels really special to just like be seeing everybody. And so that gives me a lot of like, joy and excitement um, and just like trust in being able to be able to invite more people into this space of organizing with me, knowing that we're getting these material needs met to even be able to do that. Um, and so just what I'll say is um, when I wrote down, I wrote down a couple of things that I felt like um, were, were fundraising methods that I'll share. And so the number one, you know, sort of in this order, which um, I won't be able to write in the chat right now because, or actually, you know, I, I actually still can because I'm on this one, is the the top the top one is is sharing wealth. So even without asking other people in our communities, it's like me personally, I can go on to like somebody's GoFundMe and give them twenty dollars, right? You know, but like, if I was, if I was like a rich person, if I had a lot of wealth and I was giving somebody like $20, like that's still cool. But like people might have a different capacity for that. So like sharing wealth is a huge way that we can raise funds that may not even require us to go out and do an email or do anything. Um, at, the second one is asking people to share wealth or wealth matching. So this might be a simple, um, and, and I mean, just being transparent, everybody here shared um, a lot about your positionality and like, it's a, it's, it's a range for everyone. Um, but just acknowledging that there's some people who like fundraising might be more like, hey, grandpa, like I need some money, you know what I'm saying? So like, there's different ways that different people are gonna fundraise. Somebody, um, if there's some folks that are like working through an organization, I know that like this was something that Lily had brought up um, 
to me a while ago because of um, an organization that you work with. And so that's, you know, that's also an idea. There's that's working with organizations um, on the institutional level is like a, a great idea. Um, doing a raffle or a prize or even a dinner party is some things that folks have have put out um, as well as events. We've had a few people um, do events where they're like, we're throwing a square dance and all the money is going to go for this project. Um, and then of course, some of the things we talked about today, like outreaching to sponsors, doing an email campaign. And I just wanna also, um, I just wanna presence that in the email that I sent y'all, there was a link to some resources. There is a, there is a seminar in there that actually has a lot of information about this specifically that you can click on. It's like maybe an hour. And that will give you a lot of information if you wanna go deeper into these topics like in detail. Um, so I just wanna presence that. So for, for today, uh, I really do wanna honor time. We don't have a lot more of it, but I really wanna turn it over to y'all so that we can start to get um, some of your feedback, some of your ideas, what are you feeling um, from today and what are you feeling about moving forward um, on your own? And is there anybody that really has to get off right at 5.30? And I also might stop recording just cause this, okay, cool. Um, I'm going to stop the recording.